Hi, this is Jaden with Adventure Pilot, and today I'm going to be walking you guys through IFR flight planning and iFlight EFB. So to start off, we have a few setup procedures that we're going to do. One, we're going to go into our chart settings and make sure that we have the IFR charts installed. So to do that, you'll click Menu, check for updates, and then here you'll select the states that you want and like charts for. Then you'll click Advanced Options and make sure that you have the specific IFR plates selected. Once you have the charts downloaded, we can close out of this page. And next, we'll want to get the aircraft performance profile set up. What iFly is going to do with this performance information is it's going to be able to tailor your flight plan based on the specific fuel burn, time, climb rates, descent rates, etc. So to change this, you'll go to Menu, Setup, and Aircraft. And here, if you don't have an aircraft profile created already, you'd click Create New Profile, Manual Entry, and then let's just say we're in uh, 172. So now we have our basic profile. iFly is going to automatically fill in some of the performance data based on a general database that we have, but make sure that you tailor this to your specific aircraft. Once this is done, you can click save and we're good to go. So to start here, we'll go into map mode and we're going to enable the IFR low and route charts. And then you'll notice if you click map mode, there's going to be a lot of different options here for you to select. And for today, I'm just going to keep all of these disabled so the map is clean for us to view. But just note that these are here. So now let's go ahead and plan out our flight. So to start, we'll go ahead and go into the flight plan. And then we're going to input our departure and destination airport. So I'm going to be departing from Durant and then we'll be heading over to Tyler. Now we have our basic direct to flight plan, and from here we can go ahead and actually fill out what we need. There are a few different ways to go ahead and put in the route that you'd like to do into your plan. On the map, you can actually do a lot here. So if I hold down on my magenta line, you'll notice that it's going to start rubber banding and I can drag it across the screen. And if I input it over the specific point that I'd like to put in the flight plan and then release, you're going to get some options here that are nearby to where you released. And I'm wanting to put in the airway that's located with the BYP view for tack that I'm looking at. So I would click insert airway and then Victor 15. And iFly is going to automatically populate that for you. What iFly is also going to do is it's going to pick an optimized exit point that gets you closest to the airport. So for me here, it picked Zonto. But what I'd like to do on this route instead is actually go down to this VOR and then here and then straight to Tyler. So what we'll do is we're going to drag it to the CQI VOR, insert airway, and we'll insert the Victor 569. Here it's just asking if I'd like to set the exit of Victor 15 to CQI, so I'll click yes, and boom, there we have it. You'll also notice based on our performance profile, iFly is going to enlist a, a top of climb, which is located by that blue dot there, and then it's also going to show a top of descent to get you to pattern altitude. And these settings just for reference, can be configured in Menu, Setup, and Alerts and Warnings, and it will be the Vertical Speed to Target settings. Now let's actually check out the flight plan, because there's some important stuff going on there. So if we click Flight Plan, you'll see it has a route listed, and it'll have the fuel we're using, the time it'll take, and the distances, and the altitude that we're planning for listed there. So to change the altitude, let's first look at the actual minimum altitudes for the route. So if we click the maximize button next to the airway, it'll list the full airway information and it's going to show our minimum altitude for each segment. So we see that our MEA on Victor 15 is 3500 and the Victor 569 is 2500. So we'll go ahead and at least plan for 3500. But how are we going to pick a good altitude? So here we'll click altitudes. 
So once we're on the profile view page, you can change your altitude by dragging the magenta line. And some important things to look at are for options. You'd want to make sure to select flight mode IFR, just to use the IFR altitudes. And uh, you can also allow multiple altitudes if you'd like. For me, since this is a shorter leg, I'm just going to keep it at one altitude. And then you can also set the altitude on the map. There is a button here that will allow you to optimize the altitude based on the winds, so it'll pick the best altitude to get there the fastest. And to pull up the winds, you'll click layers and head slash tailwind. And there's a lot of supplemental information here for the weather and air spaces that you can display as well. So there's no air spaces along my route, but I'll show you an example here in a second with some. But if you selected those there, that would pop up. And then you can also pop up some supplemental information about the weather conditions for your flight. All right, and then the next thing we'll want to change is the departure time, just so we can get the accurate winds for that time. And so let's just say I want to depart at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Looks like it'll be moderate. Looks like it'll be marginal VFR for the whole flight there, and I'm content with that. Um, and notice you can just scroll through the flight here and see those weather conditions. And one thing to keep in mind is the weather conditions uh, towards the end of the route are obviously going to be based on the time that you'd reach that on that forecast there. So let's set it to uh, 2 p.m. is fine. Yeah. And for my flight today, I'll just go ahead and pick 5,000 here. Looks like it'll be more calm at that altitude than the other altitudes, uh, which have a stronger headwind. Notice you can also see the estimated time and route and fuel on that page based on which altitude you choose. So now that we've closed that, we will notice that it's updated that in the flight plan. And also one thing I wanted to touch on that I forgot to is that for each uh, nav aid that you're using, it's going to list your frequencies there as well. Now that we've gotten our flight plan set up, we can look at some supplemental information like the minimums associated. And so to check out the minimums for an airport, you'll go ahead and tap on it, click view plates, and then minimums. And this will take you to the appropriate terminal procedure publication section for either the alternate minimums or the takeoff minimums. And so once you'd scroll in here, you'd go ahead and scroll to the correct city. So for me, that would be Durant. And you'll notice there, there are our takeoff minimums. Another thing I need to mention is how you'd plan any procedures like SIDs, STARS, or approach procedures. To do those, you'll go into the flight plan and then you will click procedures. Here it's going to list whether there are any standard instrument departures or any arrival routes and then obviously the approach. And we're actually going to make a new flight plan here so I can show you all that. So we'll go into flight plan, clear, and here we'll depart from Dallas to San Antonio. So now we can go ahead and put in our departure route and then an arrival route procedure. So we'll click flight plan, procedures, we'll select the departure, just the Joe Pool 7 I believe is the one I usually would pick. And here it's going to pull up a map view of the different departure procedures. So you would go through here and select them. And then you can also select the transition that you'd like to use. Make sure to select load before clicking done. Load is going to load this into the actual flight plan instead of just viewing the procedure. And then you can also select the map mode option, which is going to switch you over to the actual plate. And once you're on the plate view, you can also view the back side of the plate or the second page if it has one by clicking transition and then view page two. And now that I've picked everything out and decided this is a departure I want to do, I'll click done. And if we close, you'll notice that this was loaded into the flight plan. Now we can load the arrival route that I'd like to do. So we'll click the star, select for a map, and we're going to switch this to the map mode just so we can see what's going on here. And 
I'm going to go ahead and do the marked one arrival. And you would go ahead and select the runway that's appropriate for what you're doing as well here. And it also has all of the transitions listed here as well. I've clicked load. Here's the plate. I can do this plate. So that's all good. So we'll click done. And then finally, you can select the approach procedure that you'd like to do. Once you've selected your appropriate approach plate, you'll just click done again. And we can close and we'll notice that our whole flight plan route is now played out. Once we go back into the flight plan segment, iFly is going to show the minimums for the route and then notice it's also going to show the minimums for the actual approach. One other thing that I wanted to illustrate with our flight planning features is alternate planning. Here we can see I have my primary route planned and so if I wanted to add my alternate, I would first flight plan the alternate. So for my alternate today, I would just choose, let's just say Austin Airport. So I would flight plan from San Antonio to Austin, and then I would save that flight plan. Once that flight plan is saved, I can click flight plan, save slash load, load alternate plan. And then I would select the alternate. Once the alternate's selected, you can click close and you'll notice that there's gonna be a white or gray line on the actual moving map indicating that alternate plan. To activate this alternate plan, you'd click flight plan, alternate plan. Once you've clicked alternate plan, it'll now make your alternate plan the magenta line and base navigation off of that. Here's some important things to notice while actually flying and using this in the plane. So once you have your flight plan created, you can click the plates button and then you can click show to show whichever plate you would like. Note that our SIDS and STARS are not georeferenced, but the airport diagrams and the approach procedures are georeferenced. With all of the plates, with the, with the plates that are displayable on the map, you can click plates and then set opacity to lower the opacity of the plates. This is helpful with the airport diagrams because we actually have a Google Earth image that displays underneath that. So you can actually get a good accurate information of what the airport environment is going to look like with it all labeled. And you'll notice that with the plates button, it's based on where you're looking at the map. So as I was looking over Dallas, you noticed we could pull up the departure procedure. Then as I move towards San Antonio, I can show the star. And then I can also show the approach procedure. And if you'd not like to view it on the map, you can just click plates and then full screen approach mode. You can also click plates and sketch on plate to make any notations that you'd like. There are also some other unique sketch features that we can do. If you click tools and then select sketch, you can pull out a craft sheet in order to copy down your clearance information. You can also obviously sketch on the map in case you have any import information to put there. Once you're ready to file your IFR flight plan, you can click flight plan, briefing slash filing, and then here you'd click get briefing to get your briefing. One important thing to note is iFly is actually tied to your 1-800-WX brief account. And so if you have your account connected, it will list that you've gotten a briefing out of iFly in 1-800-WX brief. And then it'll also file using that 1-800-WX brief account. So if we click file new plan, You'll notice down here that it has that information you'd put in for your pilot name and the account name. And the account name is specific to that Lidos account, so you just want to make sure you have that correct. Other than that, iFly is going to automatically fill out this filing form, and you'll obviously want to go through and verify that this is all correct, just in case. And once you're done, you can click File Plan. Once you've filed the plan, you can go back to briefing slash filing and it'll let you activate or close that plan or cancel it. 
Other than that, that's all I have for you guys today. If you have more questions, feel free to reach out to us via phone 214-585-0444 or send us an email to support at adventurepilot.com. Thanks. Bye.